Welcome, little readers. It's Miss Gisa. And today I have a very special guest. Please help me welcome Tangela Irby. Hi, Hi. Tangela. Hi, Gisa. How are you? I am great. We are so thrilled for you to be here. You are going to be reading your story that you've written. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, well, my book is, and I have it right here, it's Pearl and Her Jeeves Ben Quilt. It's a story that talks about my family. Um, my parents are from an area in Alabama called Jeeves Ben. It's a very small, remote area. Um, and I just have so many positive memories from being there and visiting when we were younger and sitting on my grandmother's back porch and looking at the chickens and the pigs and, you know, the animals and just getting away from city life. And so this book honors my grandparents who were both, my grandmothers were both G's Ben Quilters. And for those of you who know, those quilts have traveled all over the world. Actually, they were just in a show in London. Um, they've been in the Whitney Museum. They've been in the Smithsonian Museum. A few years ago, a group of us here in Connecticut traveled to New York to see them at Lehman College. And so um, it's just wonderful to be able to share a little bit of my family history with your little readers. So I, again, I thank you so much for having me. I am so thankful that you're taking time to uh, share your beautiful book with us, um, Pearl and the G energy bend quilt for everyone just so you know um, I know you're going to love this story all of the information on how to buy your own copy is below in the text before we get started can you tell us a little bit about the the quilts behind you wow the quilts behind me are panels that were actually made by my aunt Mary Lisa Petway who is a G's bend quilter and so if you know anything about the quilts, they're being sold for 10,000, 20,000. You know, I've heard of a quilt even going for $30,000, right? They're really, yeah. really expensive. And so um, you find now that they're making a lot of what they call lap quilts. So, you know, for those of us who are a little bit older, you sit and you're watching television and your knees start to get a little cold. <laughs> so you want to have a, a blanket or a quilt to um, wrap over you and so it's the perfect size to do that and they're actually even smaller panels as you can see this one is hanging here and the quilts are very representative of my aunt's style you know using whatever material is available so you'll see there's a little corduroy mixed in here there's some jean material that's mixed in um, what i enjoy most is um, i started quilting probably i think it was around 2000 2001 that i learned to quilt and so some of the material that I put in my very first quilt, when I see some of my aunt's panels, some of that material is also used in her panels. Because when oh I finished, God. I would spend, you know, my extra material. And that was kind of my way of connecting with her and what she loves to do so much. So the book, um, you'll find in the book um, things that, you know, were in conversations that I had with my mom before she passed. There were things that my aunt would always say that I've included in the book. And in the back of the book, there's a little bit about my aunt, Mary Lisa, again, who's still in Jeans Bend, Alabama, her and my uncle. And I have quite a bit of, bit of family that's still there. Most of my uncles, um, many of my aunts uh, um, have moved on. You know, the families were much larger. You know, so I do have family and, you know, Selma, I have family, you know, we're all over, but um, our roots are right there in Jeansville, Alabama. How special, how special. Wow. Well, we are ready to listen to your wonderful story about Pearl. All right. Well, I just like to always, um, to my new little readers, I want to give you a little bit of background information first. So this is Pearl and her Jeans Ben quote. And my grandmother's name was Pearly Kennedy Petway. And so Pearl is my, my tribute to her. And no, I didn't call her Pearly. I didn't call her Pearl. We called her, we didn't even call her grandma. She wanted us to call her what my mother called her, which was mama. So on the cover of this book, Pearl is actually holding up mama's quilt. This is a, a, the, all, the illustrator's rendition of um, my grandmother's quilt. So I'm so happy to share it with you and to share some other things in this book with you too. But so let's start off. The book was written by Tangela A. Irving and illustrated by India Shiana. And can I, I must say, I love my story. I absolutely love it. 
But Miss Triana did some amazing illustrations in this book. And I can't wait for you to see them. So let's get started, okay? On a lazy Sunday afternoon, Pearl sat playing in the living room with her friends, Sally and Ella, as the aroma of homemade biscuits, smothered chicken, rice, collard greens from the garden, and grandma's famous tea cake filled the air. Wow, that quilt is amazing, Sally said. My mom has quilts like this at our house. Grandma told me I come from a long line of G's and quilters whose quilts have been displayed in galleries and museums all over, Pearl proudly boasted. When I get older, I'm going to make quilts too. And one of my quilts will hang over there one day. Pearl pointed to the empty space where she intended to display her work. That's pretty neat. But what are Jade's Bang quilts? I've never heard of that before, Sally asked wide-eyed. Pearl sat up straight with confidence. Back when my grandma was younger, the house she lived in did not have any heat. So she and her siblings used quilts to keep warm during winter. The families who lived in G's Bend, Alabama were very large. Some had 10 or more children, so they needed lots of quilts. They would tear up old clothing to use for fabric. The women would move from house to house quilting during the evening. During the day, many of them worked at the Freedom Quilting Bee. They would use sewing machines to piece together the top, but they quilted them together by hand. Sally and Ella listened in amazement, surprised that their play date had turned into a fantastic lesson about Pearl's family history. Grandma always says, quilts are like your handwriting, Pearl explained. She says every quilt should be different from everyone else's. I asked grandma how she comes up with so many different designs. She told me she talks to God when she quilts and he gives her an idea every time. I told her that I'm not sure that I will be able to quilt the way she does, but she told me you can only do your best. You cannot do my best. Helping grandma is exciting. Pearl tossed her hands in the air with a sweet smile. I get to pick the pieces of fabric that she will use next or thread the tiny needle. Sometimes I thread three or four so that they will be ready when she needs them. Sally and Ella lay on their bellies as Pearl recounted the rest of her story. Her voice rising and falling like she was singing a song. Grandma says quilting isn't always easy. Sometimes the fabric is very thick and she has to use a thimble to keep from pricking herself. One time she stuck herself and I could tell she was vexed. But no matter what, grandma keeps quilting. It sounds like your grandma knows what she's doing, Ella said. I bet you can't make one. Yes, I can, Pearl blurted in response to Ella's challenge. Since you think you know everything, listen to this. The most important part of the quilt is the top. To make her special designs, Grandma sews many different straps together. Sometimes she uses my old clothes that don't fit anymore or Grandpa's old t-shirt. Pearl spoke quickly telling everything she learned but paused to take a breath before starting again. When the top is finished, the rest of the quilt is ready to be stitched together. Did you know that? Pearl crossed her arms in satisfaction when Sally and Ella shook their heads and went on. The middle layer is called the batting. When grandma was little, sharecroppers grew the cotton and they would pick, then flatten it for quilts. Next comes the backing. Quilters used to use 25 pound flower sacks for the backing, but now we can go to the store to buy everything we need.
Do you have any questions? Pearl asked her friend. No, they answered in unison. Good, Pearl said. Now, when all the pieces are together, the backing is folded to the front and the quilt is binded together. Some people put quilt straight lines, crooked lines, patterns, or designs. Sometimes grandma follows the designs on the quilt top. Then there are times when she sews puzzle patterns. She says that it depends on what God says when they talk. I like looking on the back of the quilt to see her design. And you can see some of the designs on the back of this quilt. Wow, Pearl, you're right, Ella explained. You know a lot about quilting. Grandma says that me and my cousins need to learn so that the world will know about our quilts too. The girls hadn't noticed that Grandma sneaked in to eavesdrop and hear Pearl teaching her friends so well. She held a few quilts in her arms as she addressed the girls with a sweet smile. Sounds like Pearl has been watching and listening. Grandma beamed with pride. She knows all about our family quilts and where they came from. We didn't have a lot of money back then, but we always had our quilts. Our elders gave us quilts as gifts, especially when we moved up north. We got them when we married. We even got them when we came back down south for a visit. Ella and Sally, I have a gift for you. Here are your very own G Zen quilts. Take good care of them. Grandma handed each girl a quilt and was delighted to hear them squeal with excitement. On the back of your quilt, I have signed my name and written the name of the quilt. No one else has a quilt like yours. One day, you can pass it down to your own children and tell them the story of the G Bend book. And there you have it, the story of Pearl and her G Bend book. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> Tangela. Thank you for sharing that labor of love. <laughs> You are so welcome. Thank you for being a, a member of the audience. I appreciate that you are willing to listen to that label of love. Oh, I love when <laughs> authors read their stories. Um, I there's there are two uh, quotes in your book that really uh, stood out uh, for me. Um, one of them is when Pearl says quilts uh, quilts are like handwriting. Every quilt should be different from everyone else's. I love that she's quoting grandma saying that. Um, and then that you can only do your best, not my best, right? Grandma tells Pearl, like, you can do your best, just like I can do my best, but you can't do my best, right? Exactly. And I think that's like a life lesson, you know, in anything that we um, endeavor to do, that we can't compare ourselves to someone else's best. We can only do our best. Mm -hmm. You picked up on something. I mean, the book for me, the personal piece is, is about quilting, right? But every family is not going to have a quilting story. So bigger than that is that in this story, I think that people can see pieces of themselves or lessons in this book that they can take and move forward with. So yeah. your story may not be a quilting story, but what is your story? And no matter what it is that you do, always try to do your best. You are not in competition with anybody else. If you do your best, you can't do any, you can't think about it. What more can you do than your best? Yes, yes. And we all bring, like, like we've chatted, we all bring gifts to the table, right? Yes. And sometimes yes. you need other people to help you see your gifts. Yes. You know, 100%. <laughs> we, we move away from our gifts that it'd be something that you enjoyed 20 years ago and you look up now and you don't do that anymore. Right. Why? Right? right, so you have right. to reconnect and <laughs> someone needs to remind you what that is sometimes. Yeah, we all have them. We all bring something to the table. And, you know, when you look at the world and the things that are going on right now, and you know the things that often divide us, I think if we take a minute to look at the best in everyone, and we start out from there, you know, forget about preconceived notions and what you've heard, etc. But if you start and you deal with everyone as if their handwriting is special. So whatever their footprint is, whatever, whoever they, it, whoever they are, there's something yeah. special about them. And I think if yeah. we can remember that 
or bring ourselves to a place where that's what we that's what we expect of ourselves I think the world will be a much better place oh yes much such better. words of wisdom such yeah. words of wisdom Tangela well I am just I'm thrilled that you shared this lovely story with us thank you um we hope to have you back on with future anytime. stories anytime yes I am work I have a couple of things that I'm working on so I'm looking forward to um just continue th this journey has been amazing for me um but right now I'm really working to try to get Pearl's message out there you know you can have a wonderful book and I've gotten some really really strong feedback and I am so encouraged yes. but it's through people like you who offer me a platform where I can share my book that I am really really grateful for so I want to say thank you to you and all the work that you do um because you know children the your students are that's our hope for what's going to come you know there are a lot of things that we didn't get right you know in the world um but the hope is that through people like you they learn to treat everyone as if they're special you know everyone is not the teamwork same. you know everyone teamwork. is not the same exactly, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. yeah there's something special yeah. about everyone yeah yeah well, we, uh, we, we've just enjoyed this so much. And um, for all of you watching, uh, make sure you also catch our, uh, our interview with Tangela in a separate episode. So um, watch that too, because you'll learn a little bit more about Tangela and her process in writing um, Pearl Energy's Ben Quilt. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss another read aloud see you later bye-bye